Why, if it isn't Ripple Tide's very own merchant, Tressa. Tressa definitely has the talent for such a lucrative career, and she's able to haggle any item that catches her eye. Some would consider it downright thievery for how much of a steal she gets her products for. Though, funnily enough, she despises thievery. Even so, as long as nothing or no one attempts to get in her way, she'll generally be happy-go-lucky. And if they do decide to bring her trouble, then she'll be a force to be reckoned with. Tressa as a combatant is one of the most flexible options in the game. This is because her stat line is extremely balanced. As a result, Tressa doesn't really have any stats she excels in. However, her physical attack and elemental attack are relatively good, albeit she has a bit more physical attack than elemental. Likewise, she has good physical defense and elemental defense. As such, she could go into jobs that bolster any of those stats more, which happens to be the majority of the jobs present. However, two stats that she struggles in are her speed and her accuracy. Having low speed means she would struggle as a dancer, for example, because she'd have trouble going before her allies during combat. That being said, you can run her as a full support and potentially get a lot out of her. Likewise, a low accuracy stat means she'd struggle to hit with physical moves without some kind of assistance, whether that be from the accessories or nuts. Even so, Tressa has plenty of versatility thanks to her stat line and base job. Speaking of which, Tressa's base job is the Merchant, which comes with a mixture of offensive and supportive skills. Offensively, she can use Trade Winds, Trade Tempest, Hired Help, and Biffleguns Bounty. The first two moves are Wind Spells that target single foes and the entire party's life. Meanwhile, Hired Help allows the Traveler to use money for damage output, and the amount spent will determine the amount of damage dealt to the foe. In addition, depending on the choice made, there's a chance that they can apply ally buffs or debuffs on the foe. You also have access to the Merchant's Divine skill, Biffleguns Bounty, which is simply an elemental attack that gives the Traveler money based on the damage dealt to the foe. It's rather interesting at the very least, but I found myself never really using it since the BP cost is so high. Even so, it's rather nice to have all the same. On the supportive side, Trissa innately has access to Collect, Rest, Donate BP, and Sidestep. Collect isn't really a supportive move per se, but it doesn't really have any other category to fit into. That being said, all Collect does is attempt to steal money from a foe. The lower the HP is on the foe, the more likely you'll succeed. Meanwhile, on the actual supportive side, you have Rest. Rest is a 0 SP move that restores HP, SP, and cures status ailments during that turn. It's really nice to have around since it can make Trissa self-sufficient. Then you have Donate BP, which allows the Traveler to transfer whatever amount of available BP, up to 4, to an ally of their choice. It's really good for setting up heavy dealing moves and the like. And finally you have Sidestep, which guarantees 100% dodge from a physical attack. This can potentially alleviate some physical defense issues, but it only works once, so you have to boost a lot for it to keep up with the foe. Beyond the Merchant's arsenal, you have Tress's talents, which includes Purchase and Eye for Money. Purchase is similar to Steal, where you can get items from NPCs, only instead of making a percent base check to get it for free, you have to use money to simply buy it outright. Likewise, some items cannot be purchased and some items can't be stolen. You generally need one of the two to get most items, but you can easily swap out a traveler if you find an item you can't obtain through one of those methods. Similarly, every time you make a purchase, there's a chance that you'll get it at a discount. The discount is completely random, but it's nice to have when it does trigger. Then there's Eye for Money. At random intervals during your travel, you'll gain money. Simple as that. In fact, both of these talents are really simple, all things considered. Unlike secondary jobs, where there is a lot more to consider. And in Tressa's case, you have a lot to consider. Because Tressa has a completely balanced stat line, she can pick up almost every single secondary job and use it well. So to start, we can go over the Cleric job first. The Cleric job can work well with Tressa if you plan to run her supportively since her elemental defense stat is relatively decent. Moreover, if you want to increase the potency of her healing, you can imbue her with Shelter and Veil. This should allow her to act as a decent Cleric if you are in need of one. Likewise, because the Cleric comes with staves and light magic, both weapon types that she does not have access to innately, she can attack with a total of 5 types of weapons. It's not the most per se, but it's definitely a good amount to have when your main focus is healing and using other supportive skills such as Donate BP. So, running Tressa as a Cleric is not a bad option whatsoever. However, if you want something more offensive, you can always run the Scholar. The Scholar job can be a good pick for Tressa. Because Tressa has innate wind magic, she can run Scholar and have 4 of the 6 elements covered, only missing light and dark. Moreover, the Scholar comes with staves, which doesn't overlap with anything Tressa has innately. As a result, Tressa can become a really decent breakbot with 3 equipable weapons and 4 types of spells. Likewise, her elemental attack is fairly workable. As mentioned previously, her stat line is balanced, so she is able to work with many jobs including the Scholar. However, it would be worth mentioning that there aren't any complementary bows or polearms that raise fire, ice, or lightning magic damage, only wind. That being said, there is a stave that raises ice damage, so she could still hit hard for ice damage. Even so, it's nice coverage at the end of the day, and she could still do a decent chunk of damage, all things considered, if given the right gear. 
so Scholar Tressa is a relatively decent pick. And then we have the Warrior Job. The Warrior Job is effectively an all-offensive class with basically no supportive qualities, except for one key move, Incite. Incite, in and of itself, isn't necessarily the most supportive move since it's not guaranteed to work and will not work against magic and area of effect moves, which become more common later into the game. However, because Tressa comes with sidestep, she can attempt to bait foes to attack her and she can dodge it guaranteed so long as it's a physical move. Likewise, the job comes with a plethora of skills that target physical damage, giving Tressa more options as she locked innately. That being said, the job wouldn't be great for breaking as Tressa already comes with pole arms. Warrior Tressa would have a total of 4 weapons to work with, so her best bet would be to focus on being offensive. You could try and run a mixture of offense and support, but you'll run into a pitfall of roll broadening. Likewise, and this part is unavoidable, she may struggle to hit her foes later into the game because her accuracy stat is low. This can be a massive problem when the warrior is heavily focused on dealing physical damage. You can attempt to alleviate the issue with gear that increases accuracy, but then the ceiling for damage output would decrease. Still, it's not a bad option for Tressa by any means, but I would recommend that you be careful with her as the job can potentially make her dead weight. In a somewhat similar position is the Hunter Job. The Hunter Job also comes with a plethora of physical damage dealing moves, only instead of the Warrior's lack of variety, it comes with a debuffing move and a magic move. The debuffing move in question is Leg Hole Trap, which is one of the best support moves in the game as it can indefinitely delay the foe's actions during a given turn. Likewise, because Tressa has supportive capabilities thanks to her innate merchant job, she can run Hunter and stick to support. Likewise, you can run Thunderbird, which is basically trade wins for lightning magic. This can give Tressa more breaking potential as the job comes with axes and lightning magic. However, it also comes with bows, so there will be overlap present. Even so, it's still 5 weapon types at her disposal, so it's not that bad all things considered. Likewise, because there are a lot of physical dealing moves, Tressa will also struggle to hit her foes. It's a similar issue with the warrior job, only that you'll have other options to work. So if you do want to mixify Tressa even more, you can run the hunter job. And then, we have the apothecary job. The apothecary job is also a decent pick for Tressa as it comes with a mixture of offensive and supportive skills. Defensively, she can run Amputation and Last Stand. Amputation is a single foe hitting move that deals a good amount of damage with an axe. Likewise, you have Last Stand, which does damage to every foe, and depending on how much HP the user has when they use, Last Stand will determine its damage output. Moreover, for breaking potential, the Apothecary also comes with Ice Magic, giving Tressa a total of 5 weapon types to work with. Of course, that isn't all there is to the Apothecary job. The supportive skills that the job brings bolsters Tressa's role even further as a mixed support break bot. The support moves in question include First Aid, Rehabilitate, and Vivify. First Aid is a single ally targeting heal spell that has a decent amount of potency. Likewise, you have Rehabilitate, which cures any status ailments on an ally of their choosing and renders them immune to further status ailments for two turns. And Vivify simply revives a fallen ally. These are all really useful tools when running the Apothic area as Tressa's secondary job, as it can allow her to excel more as a support unit. Albeit, the break variety isn't necessarily the strongest since the Apothecary only comes with axes and ice magic. Even so, it's a rather decent job for Tressa. And finally, for the basic secondary jobs, we have the Thief job. The Thief job can turn Tressa into a really reliable break bot and support unit thanks to a couple of the job's moves and the weapon variety. For breaking purposes, the Thief job can give Tressa an additional 3 weapon types to work with, those being daggers, swords, and fire magic for a grand total of 6 weapon types. Moreover, the Thief job has 2 dagger moves that excel in not only keeping her support capabilities active, but also serve as a means of easy breaking, those being HP Thief and SP Thief. HP Thief and SP Thief are double hitting dagger moves that restore HP and SP respectively. Moreover, the cost to use these moves are extremely low, so Tressa is able to spam these moves with no drawbacks as she can easily recover her SP with SP Thief. And on top of all that, she is able to charge up her BP as she uses HP Thief and SP Thief since they only cost SP to use. This means she can consistently use Donate BP, which is fantastic. Likewise, there's Shackle Foe and Armor Corrosive, two enemy debuffing moves. Shackle Foe debuffs an enemy for physical attack and Armor Corrosive debuffs an enemy for physical defense. This not only makes the process of recovering SP much easier, but also allows your allies to take full advantage of the debuffs. It's such a solid job for Tressa as it will allow her to take full advantage of her innate supportive skills and use other ones to further prosper during battles as well as act as a reliable break bot thanks to the 6 weapon types it grants. And then we move on to the advanced job, starting with the sorcerer job. The sorcerer job in and of itself is relatively fine as a job for Tressa, but only really shines because of one thing, the weaponry she has access to. Innately, Tressa can access pole arms and bows thanks to the merchant job. Moreover, there's a single pole arm and bow that boosts the power of wind magic, those being the prime vol bow of storms and the trade wind spear. Likewise, the bonuses gained from those weapons stack, so because of this, Tressa is able to use the strongest wind magic in the game by spamming Ventus Saltaire. 
On another note, she can also stack support skills that further increase her damage output. I'll go more into that later, but the thing that should be taken from this is that if you're going to use Tress as a sorcerer, then you must get those two weapons as that's what's going to be carrying her for damage output. Likewise, other spells aren't going to hit nearly as hard because they don't have access to the bonus modifiers, so have fun only using wind magic. The other advanced job worth mentioning is the Rune Lord. The Rune Lord job is one of, if not the best jobs for Tressa for its disgustingly high support ceiling. Let's start with something simple at first and discuss the breakbot potential. The Rune Lord comes with equipable swords and axes, two weapons that Tressa does not have access to naturally. This already raises her break cap from 3 to 5 before any Rune Lord skills. Because she's able to equip swords, pull arms, axes, and bows, her magical potency increases significantly thanks to the specific weapons that raise her in elemental damage. For example, Herald Sword increases the potency of fire magic so she's able to deal more fire damage. This is especially complementary with a good amount of the Rune Lord skills. Most of the skills for the Rune Lord are elemental runes that essentially add modifiers to physical attacks. This allows travelers to deal additional elemental damage depending on which one is chosen as it covers every element. This essentially gives Tressa 10 weapon types to work with when breaking. Moreover, she can transfer these effects with the skill Transfer Rune so that every ally can take advantage of these modifiers. And this is the part where everything goes batshit insane. You see, Transfer Rune also applies to every skill that only targets a user. This includes none other than Sidestep. You know, the move that guarantees that the user dodges a physical attack 100% of the time? Yes sir, Rune Lord Tressa is in fact one of the most unbalanced combinations in the game thanks to that combination alone. What's the point of physical defense when you have that, am I right? Of course, since this is a late game job, you won't be able to abuse it until you get near the chapter 4 areas. Even so, you can still have it ready for the other travelers you neglected to use up to that point. And you may be wondering about magical attacks then. Well, as it only covers physical attacks, you can still get hit by magical attacks. That is unless you run a dancer and cleric on the same team as well. You see, the cleric job comes with a little known move known as Reflective Veil, which returns magic damage back to the caster. However, this can only be casted on one ally at a time. That's where the dancer comes into play. The dancer's divine skill, Sealtesia's Seduction, will allow single target moves to hit every foe and ally. So what you can essentially do to break the game is run Rune Lord Tressa, spam Sidestep, run a dancer and cleric, grant Sealtesia's Seduction on the cleric, and spam Reflective Veil. This will essentially make the entire party immune to damage. It's ruthless and disgusting, yet it's so amazing at the same time. And while not as disgusting, you can also use Transfer Rune Rest to restore HP, SP, and cure status ailments on every party member. Rune Lord Tressa is by far one of the best combinations for her, and I would be hard pressed to find anyone saying otherwise. Although speaking of combinations, we still have support skills to cover. Offensively, she has plenty of options at her disposal. This includes Elemental Aid, Surpassing Power, Elemental Edge, BP Eater, Stronger Strikes, and Augmented Elements. Elemental Aid increases the damage output of spells by 50%, but increases the cost of casting by double. Damage output can increase even further if paired with Elemental Edge, which increases Elemental Attack and Defense indefinitely during battles. BP Eater, which increases damage output of boosting. Stronger Strikes, which increases damage output of striking a foe's weakness or if they're broken and Augmented Elements, which is a flat 20% increase with no penalties. Of course, if you do plan on running any of these skills, you will need Surpassing Power to increase the damage cap, so Tressa isn't stuck doing 9,999 damage. And generally speaking, you'd be running most of these skills with Sorcerer Tressa as they greatly complement her damage output. Not a lot of other jobs really function with these types of skills, so if you already have a dedicated Sorcerer, then you can always run her supportively. Supportively, you have a bit less to work with, but there are skills that she can use effectively nonetheless. This includes Saving Grace, SP Saver, Hide and Healing, Patience, and Resist Ailments. Saving Grace will always be a worthwhile skill for any traveler since it allows a traveler to be healed above their maximum HP. This will always mitigate any bulk issues since everyone can effectively become damaged sponges. SP Saver is also really nice to have for supporting allies since it will reduce the amount of SP a skill needs to be used by half. Although you could try and bank on Patience that has a 25% chance of allowing your Traveler to act again on the same turn. For Rune Lord Tressa, you can run Hide and Healing and Resist Ailments. These two skills will pair really well with Rune Lord Tressa since she can use Transfer Rune and heal the entire party for HP, SP, and Status Ailments with Rest. Hide and Healing will increase the potency of that effect and Resist Ailments will give Tressa the ability to ignore status effects more often. The latter can be especially important if you need to use her for rest and sidestep shenanigans as you don't want her afflicted by anything that can stop her from using any of those moves. 
So make sure to take any of the mentioned support skills into consideration if you plan on using Tressa to the best of her abilities. And with that, that about covers Tressa. Tressa is one of the most flexible travelers you'll have in your party thanks to her base job and balanced stat line. As such, she's a perfect fit for almost any job. If you ended up using other combinations not mentioned in the video, feel free to let me know what you chose and how they worked out for you. I hope this guide provided insight into Tressa as well as any help along the way, and if you've been watching up to this point, then thank you. Covering every traveler was a worthwhile project in mind, so I'm glad I was able to do it. So with that, thanks for watching.